Church of Scientology, which legally doesn't exist. <laughs> You're only a member of Scientology if you join the IAS. And the IAS is unincorporated. Nobody can... It's all lawyer legal labyrinths to avoid lawsuits. That's all it is. How do we... How do we shirk and scramble the eggs and be Fabian so that we can't be sued for our daily criminal acts? The Church of Scientology has evolved its own system, justice system, within the system. You can never sue a Scientologist. You mean With, if you're a Scientologist, you cannot sue another Scientologist? Correct. Without permission from the International Justice Chief, which, that's all bogus. You write to the International Justice Chief, it can be a year or two before they even respond. Um, I know a medical doctor who was fleeced out of his money in vast quantities. And for one year, he was writing IJC to sue this lawyer, a David Miscavige pet. Couldn't get a response from IJC. So the system in the church is quite diabolical. If you're renting a space to another Scientologist, and this person starts acting up, leaving doors open, letting water stream, wasting electricity, you can't evict the person. If you try to sue or go to the police or law enforcement, you are the one that can get declared because it's considered a suppressive act, believe it or not. because it's considered a suppressive act, believe it or not, to get the society justice in with a Scientologist. If you've loaned money to a Scientologist, good luck! If that person is declared, the ethics officer will actually say, you don't have to pay them back, they're an antisocial suppressive person. <laughs> You're off the hook. And you know, Scientologists borrow money flagrantly and willfully and constantly from each other. In fact, registrars, the people, the salespeople that extort the money, they say, when you say, I'm wiped out, I'm tapped out, I have no money, they say, who do you know you can borrow from? The salespeople in the church actually encourage you to go borrowing from others. But if the person you borrowed from is reading the internet or is friendly with people who've left, your money's gone. If they get declared suppress a person, you don't have to pay back one thin dime. So if somebody, uh, let's say somebody borrows $50,000 for their bridge from their friend Joe, Joe's declared a suppressive person. Guess goodbye to 50000 <laughs> Joe's not going to ever declare, ever get that $50,000 back unless he then sues the Scientologist in regular WOG court. Well, you're not allowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe can sue the Scientologist. Well, once he's out, people have done this constantly, taken it into their own hands to sue. This is a church that feels you can't even apply society remedies and the law courts. You can't do that. You can't sue. A Scientologist in good standing is off the hook. They say the famous Monique Yingling words, we'll handle it internally. Both sides describe a work environment inside the church where punching, choking, and kicking as a means of discipline and intimidation occurred on numerous occasions, and no one ever filed criminal charges 
or even call the police. Tommy Davis is the church spokesman, and Monique Yingling is an attorney for the church. How is it possible that a member of the church could assault about a dozen people and nobody come forward about it and nobody people file did. any charges? How come people the church didn't file any charges if, in fact, Marty Rathbun was really beating people up? People did come forward about it, and there were reports written, as, uh, as Mr. Davis pointed out. And the reason that there were reports written was because it was very untoward. There may have been some people who decided they didn't want to report it, and they suffered it in silence. But there were indeed reports written. So why didn't the church then decide to proceed with charges? I mean, aggravated assault is, 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 a, is a felony. It's against he, the law. The church treated it as an internal matter, and he was disciplined internally. A good friend of mine, a beautiful girl, Sylvia, got beaten up by her live-in partner. I mean, he beat her up pretty brutally. She lived in Clearwater, so she went to the ethics officer rather than call Clearwater PD. Clearwater PD is off limits. Crimes cannot be reported to Clearwater Police Department. And the ethics officers wanted to know what she had done to pull it in. And when she said she wanted to go to law enforcement, <gasps> the ethics officer strictly forbid her. Absolutely not! Now, there are two reasons for that. One is Hubbard's Law. You can't turn a Scientologist in no matter what their crime, you cannot turn them in to law enforcement. Number two, it was bad PR, the public relations aspect of it. Guess what he did? What happened? He gave them a really big donation. I think he gave ID logs $100,000. So he was off the hook. He didn't get any ethics handling for beating a girl semi-unconscious. He didn't get that at all. Why? The church considered him a good boy. He just gave the church $100,000. So it often plays to the church's advantage to keep things away from uh, log courts, police departments. Oh yes, it does. The ethics officer makes his quota. They come into the office. He says, I need you to buy three sets of basics. Now, you've been a bad boy. How much money are you going to give? So it's all about the cash. It's uh, not about ethics. It's not ecclesiastical, it's not religious. It's how much can we gouge you for today? So they're selling indulgences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Some church. The scams are being told. I think it's outrageous and a horrible policy that you cannot turn in a criminal to law enforcement if they're a Scientologist. If they're a Scientologist, they can do mayhem, they can lie, cheat, steal, embezzle, steal your business. You can't report to law enforcement and you cannot sue them. That is the dogma and doctrine written by L. Ron Hubbard in Scientology, green on white policies.